Up to 1,000 animals are in the care of, of the San Diego Humane Society each day, but one positively patriotic annual fair helps keep their doors open to the community. News scene reporter Aliyah Bora has the story. On Saturday, May 4th, the San Diego Humane Society held one of their biggest events of the year. This is our 19th annual Walk for Animals, and of course one of our biggest fundraisers of the year to raise money for puppies and kitties and doggies and rabbits. Nearly 5,000 people and 2,000 four-legged friends participated in this year's walk, which also included a morning full of dog activities and contests. The San Diego Humane Society provides veterinary, microchip, and vaccine services for pets, in addition to facilitating pet adoptions. We uh, both are puppy lovers, dog lovers, and we said, hey, why not come out and walk and for a cause? And little did we know we'd be going home with a little guy. We saw him, and his eyes basically just drew us in. And we started petting them and learned about the process that we had to go through to, to adopt. And they made it pretty easy. I don't think people understand the magnitude of the number of animals that come through our shelter. We're hoping to adopt more than 7,000 animals this year, which is um, well over 2,000 more than we did last year. The San Diego Humane Society is a private nonprofit organization, which means they fund their services through charitable giving and grants. We're always looking for donations, and you can do that online. You can come to any one of our locations. We have a wonderful wish list on our website as well, so if money is not an option, supplies, really help the animals, toys, even up to reams of paper, you know, would just help us put more money into the animals. With photojournalist Casera Coffey, Aliyah Bora, News Scene. The next San Diego Humane Society event will be held tomorrow in North Park at the Festival of Arts. They will be hosting a mobile pet adoption booth where you can meet and take home a homeless San Diego animal. And busy week in entertainment, but never a dull moment in Hollywood. Trevor Moody has, is here to give us the buzz. Yes, Natanya Taylor is always not to go on to Hollywood. Let's get right to it. A pop star's life must be hard. Fast cars, bling bling, but getting attacked by a crazed fan, you can expect that also. Twiggy pop star sensation Justin Bieber was attacked on stage by a male who was attending his concert in Dubai earlier this week. The 19-year-old singer fled to the other side of the stage while security apprehended the enthusiastic fan. Bieber and his piano, which also took a tumble, are both okay. The bees wasted no, late, no time later tweeting. Dubai, nothing stopped the show. The show must go on. For all you Bees fans, his concert will reach this Southern California area by June. Another celebrity will be spending time in the big house. Grammy Award winning singer Lauryn Hill was sentenced this week to three months in a federal pokey prison. Hill failed to pay taxes on more than two million in earnings during a five year period. Hill said she had always intended to pay the overdue taxes eventually but found herself unable to raise money during a period when she dropped out of the music business. Lauren Hill had not made music since her platinum album, The Miss Education Lauren Hill, in 2000. Hill is tentatively scheduled to begin her prison term July 8th. It was not immediately clear where she would serve the census. Well, you can't have an entertainment update without more news from Lizzie Lohan. The troubled starlet is currently serving a 90-day sentence in Rancho Mirage, California, for violating <clears throat> probation. Patients at the Betty Ford Clinic usually earn privilege to go off campus for occasional shopping or a meal. But no, not Ms. Lohan, who will be, be confined to the desert grounds according to the L.A. Superior Court. Patients are forbidden to have cell phones. They can access the Internet only on weekends and are drug tested randomly. This is nothing new to the actress. This would be her second stay at the Buddy Ford Clinic since 2010. The last time audiences saw super spy Ethan Hunt on screen in 2011, it seemed like it would be his last impossible mission. No release date, director, or writer has been released yet, but Tom Cruise will produce and star in the movie Mission Impossible 5. One thing is for sure, the fan will look forward to adding to the Mission Impossible franchise. Mission Impossible 4 earned a staggering $700 million worldwide. Stars flood the scene at the Met Gala this week. Now let's play a quick game of who wore it better. First, we have Ken Kardashian, who wore a floor print dress kind of similar to the rowdy Mrs. Dotfire, wouldn't you say? 
Set Center City star Jessica Parker was also in attendance. She decided to go for a more majestic crane look. Who rocked the frost tips better, Nicole Ricci or the Princess of the Deep herself, Disney's own Ursula? Along with Malice Cyrus, who attended the Met Gala, she would not go unnoticed. She opted for the spiky gold hair resembling, well, a crane. The Met Gala is an annual ball that celebrates the opening of the Metropolitan Museum exhibit. Well, on the Tay and Teller, I tell you this much, I think those celebrities should take some styling tips from us. <laughs> Thank you, Trevor. I no agree. doubt. We'll be right back. Excuse me. <laughs> well, hello. Hi. My internet connection's acting up. Do you know anything about hot spots? You know, if you angle yourself 45 degrees to the north, your computer's Wi-Fi card will, uh, extrapolate the router signal more efficiently. Hit enter. It's going to come up with a dialog box. And San Diegans will be feeling the heat as temperatures soar this weekend. David Matris is here with weather. That's right, Nate and Taylor. We have a big warm up this weekend, but first let's quickly take a look at our temperatures um, throughout um, at the airport. Actually, it's 69 degrees at the airport. Humidity is 60 per 60 percent, and the winds are out of the west southwest at 11 miles per hour. If we take a look at our surf conditions, we have one to two feet at west facing beaches and two to three feet at south facing beaches. The swells are our 12 seconds. Um, sun set this evening at 737 and the sun will rise tomorrow at 553. So let's take a look at our temperatures throughout the county. It's cool um, along in downtown, um, 70 degrees. La Jolla up the coast a little bit, 69 degrees. Um, Poway, it's a little bit warmer, about 13 degrees warmer, 83. Um, El Cajon, 78. So temperatures are hovering around the upper 70s. So let's take a look at our first map. Um, here is our high pressure that is associated with our big warm-up that we will be experiencing this weekend. Um, and um, temperatures, like I was mentioning, out in the deserts could reach up to triple digits. So our next big story on this map is our huge storm that we um, residents in Texas saw. Um, some of the tornadoes were actually spawned through this cold front that we see. Um, we Residents down there saw damaging winds and heavy localized flooding as well. So um, residents down there um, are experiencing not so good weather that we are experiencing. Um, if we move up along, um, uh, it's also associated with that cold front. We have some rain showers associated in the Ohio River Valley. So if we take a look at our next map, we do have, this is of course what's setting up the severe weather in the Midwest, the warm, moist air coming up from the Gulf experiencing with or tapping into with the cold front and it's causing some of those um, triggering mechanisms to cause some tornadoes like I mentioned. Um, there is some severe weather that is expected to um, possibly happen over the weekend like Sunday night, early Sunday morning um, up in the Ohio River Valley. So residents out there should definitely take some time and prepare for that as well because um, if we take a look at our next map, um, our temperatures for Saturday forecast along the coast, um, out ahead of the front will be upper 80s. Um, behind the front, we have, of course, a lot colder um, temperatures, of course, in the upper Ohio River Valley 48. But let's take a look um, here at San Diego for our forecast over the weekend. We have low clouds, then some sun. High temperature will be 72, and low temperature will be 64. Inland valleys, low clouds giving way to some sunshine in the afternoon. High temperature 83, and low temperature will be 67. If you take a look at our mountains, mostly sunny all day tomorrow, 81 degrees. Low temperature will be 52. And deserts, of course, it's going to be hot. And high temperature, look at that, 99 degrees, and low temperature is going to be 72 degrees. So perfect um, perfect chance to get out and experience the nice warm weather and also the beach for um, some surfing as well. So, Sounds amazing. Cool. Thank you. And speaking of surfing, if you love the beach or the movies, then you might want to check out the San Diego 
San Diego's second surf film festival. Head over to Bird Surf Shed off Marina Boulevard to catch the excitement. There's everything from art galleries, surfboard shaping demos, and over 42 films for your enjoyment. Joel Tudor and George Trim's film titled Bootleg is showing tonight, capture some, capturing some of San Diego's finest in action. For show times and additional information, visit their website at www.sandiegosurffilmfestival.com. And this has been, um, I'm sorry, excuse me. That's all we have for this edition of New Scene. I'm Taylor Brink. And I'm Nate Holmes. Thank you for joining us.